The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents World with a Fence, starring Robert Stack, Richard Webb, and Gloria Blondell. Frank Leahy, coach of Notre Dame, is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Here is Frank Leahy. Isn't it wonderful when things go well? You know when you make plans and they work out just right? Of course, having things run smoothly in any undertaking, whether it's football, baseball, or business, needs understanding. That's the secret of a happy home, mother and father and children working, not at cross purposes, but together, together with one another and with God. Yes, in a home where a family works together with God's plan in mind, where there's the daily practice of family prayer, there is real teamwork because God will never let you down if you sincerely ask his help. That's why family prayer is so important in all our homes. Family prayer is teamwork with God. Frank Leahy will speak again following our family theater play starring Robert Stack, Richard Webb, and Gloria Blondell in World with a Fence. <laughs> You probably remember Tim Stryker. Big Tim Stryker, they called him. Back in 1935, he was chosen All-American quarterback. That was when he and I were juniors at Manning. I was Tim's roommate. Funny about that. It didn't matter that I was unimportant and had to work my way through college. But that was Tim's way. That's why he was a big man. He accepted everyone as an equal. I lived with him three years before I found out that he came from one of Boston's wealthiest families. The year that we were seniors, a girl named Janie Pierce came to Manning. She was a transfer from some Western college. I fell in love with her, and I thought she kind of liked me. When the senior dance came along, I juggled my resources around so that I could ask her to go. I had it all figured out that night when I got back to our room. Hiya, Tim. Hi, Johnny boy. Why all the good cheer? <laughs> oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, going to the senior dance, Tim? Yeah, I sort of thought I would. You? Yeah, I uh, sort of thought I would, too. Good stuff. Who are you dragging? I'm well, not sure yet. I haven't asked her. How about you? Oh, I don't know for sure. I kind of halfway gave a bid to that blonde, the one who transferred to Manning from some Western college. Uh, Janie Pierce? Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's her name. Know her, Johnny? Yes, I know her. Well, what did she say, Tim? Oh, she grabbed at the chance, all right. I don't know. Maybe I'll change my mind. Change your mind? Oh, you can't do that, Tim. What do you mean? I can't do that. Well, if you asked her and she accepted, you can't just decide to take somebody else. Why, any gal on the campus Sure, would... I know any gal on the campus would be glad to go with you, Tim, but... But Janie, well, she isn't just any gal. No? She's new at Manning, Tim. She doesn't know what a big shot you are. Ah, it'd be a dirty trick to stand her up after she's accepted your invitation. <laughs> You're a funny kid, Johnny. Go right ahead and be an idealist. But one of these days, that's going to land you right behind the eight ball. Okay, so I'm an idealist, so I don't know what the score is. Now, so... wait a minute, Johnny, wait a minute. Oh, I'm not blaming you. It must be tough for a big shot to understand things like that. And it would mean a lot to Janie. Going to that dance with you, Tim. <laughs> okay, kid, you win. Then you'll take her? Sure, kid, sure. It's a promise. Oh, gosh, Tim, that's swell. You're a right guy. <laughs> Hey there, Johnny. What kept you? Oh, hello, Mike. I just came in. Well, where's your date? No date. I came stag. The line forms on the right. Hey, what the heck are you staring at? Isn't that, isn't that Janie Pierce standing over there all alone? Yeah, but lay off. She's Tim Stryker's girl. <laughs> he left her there a half hour ago and she hasn't dared move. Hey, there's my date. Rosie, where the heck have you been? Hello, Janie. What are you doing, standing here all alone? Oh, hi, Johnny. Uh, Tim had to make a telephone call. He'll be back in a minute. Well, how long has he been gone? 
Oh, not long. Not more than a half an hour, huh? Janie, how about walking out with me and checking up on the moon? But w what if Tim... Oh, it'll be good for the lark. Let him stand here a while and find out what it feels like. Come on. Wonderful night, isn't it, Johnny? Yeah, wonderful. New England's so different from what I've been used to. We don't have trees like this in Kansas. No? Is anything wrong, Johnny? Wrong? What, what do you mean? Well, you haven't heard a word I've been saying. You, Janie. You, yes, Johnny? You know, don't you? Know what? That I'm in love with you, that... That I've been in love with you from the minute we met. Well, Johnny... No, no, don't stop me. I've, I've got to say this. I've kept it inside me too long. I know I haven't a chance. Tim's a great guy. He's the best friend I've ever had. I, I feel like a heel, but this thing has happened to me. Well, it's... Oh, Johnny, Johnny, please. I, I didn't know. I don't blame you if you think it's funny. I'm nobody. Tim's the swellest guy who ever lived. Only when a thing like this hits Johnny, you, Johnny, stop. Stop talking about Tim. Okay, Janie. Okay. Oh, Johnny, you poor darling. I'm so sorry that you now, didn't... Don't pity me, Janie. I can stand anything but that pity you. I know it's a good joke. Johnny, a girl never pities the man she loves. I know I'm sticking my chin out, but what did you say? I said, a girl never pities the man she loves. The man she... Janie, you are... Oh, Janie. Oh, you're so naive, Johnny. You're so completely sold that Tim can have anything he wants. What makes you think Tim and I want the same thing? If you weren't so blind, you'd have known how I feel long ago. Janie. Janie. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, my darling. Janie, you... You don't know how much this means to me. I still can't believe it. Then kiss me again. I'll... I'll make you happy, Janie. I promise you I will. I'll, I'll, I'll work. I'll give you everything that Tim could have given you. I'll give you the world with a fence around oh, it. Oh, darling, I don't want the world with a fence around it. All I want is you. Hey, Tim, there's Johnny. How are you, Johnny? Oh, hello, Bob. Hey, Johnny, you bum. I hear you walked off with my girl. How about that? Uh, that's right, Tim. Listen, I did. Admitting it. Johnny, I guess you never learned. When a guy steals his pal's best girl, he doesn't go around bragging about it. Sorry, Tim, it's... it's not bragging. It's an announcement. Janie and I are going to be married. I thought you ought to know. What was that, Johnny? I said, Janie and I are going to be married. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. I'm sorry, Tim, it's just one of those things. Yeah, just one of those things. <laughs> well, congratulations, kid. Best of luck. You mean you're, you're not sore? Why should I be sore? What's it to me? I'm glad for both of you. <laughs> you make a swell couple. Oh, gosh, Tim, thanks. Thanks a lot. Janie and I were married a month after graduation. Tim Stryker was best man. A lot of the people came to the wedding just to see Tim. Both Janie and I were mighty proud to have him as our friend. We moved into a one-room apartment, and I got a job as a filling station attendant. It wasn't much, but times were tough, and it was all I could get. Sometimes I wondered how I was ever going to keep my promise to Janie. Oh, Johnny, the world with a fence around oh, it. You think I'm kidding? <laughs> well, I'm not. You know what Mr. Andrews said to me today? What, Johnny? He's thinking of transferring Thompson to Albany and making me manager of the station. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. That's oh, just the beginning. You wait and see. Darling, I promise you'll never regret marrying Johnny Bradford. Ninety dollars a week? That's a wonderful salary. Oh, Janie, you're a great girl. Sure, ninety bucks is all right. But it isn't enough for me to give you everything I promised. Oh, darling, stop being silly. Okay, honey, okay. Oh, I have a surprise for you. Tim Stryker's coming to dinner. What? Yes, he, he got back from England this morning and called us the first thing. So naturally, I invited him out for dinner. Well, I'll be darned. Big Tim coming here to dinner. He's a big man. He knows a lot of important people. And to see us on his first night oh, home, Oh, my... darling, you're so naive. 
Tim probably counts you the best friend he has. Now go on, go on and take your shower. I've got a roast to look after, and Tim will be here any minute. <laughs> Oh, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, if I'd known this wife of yours could cook like that, I'd have married him myself. <laughs> Over my dead body. You two men sit here and catch uh, up on past events. I'm going to stack the dishes. How about letting us help? No, thanks. I'll only be a minute. <laughs> She's a great girl, Johnny. Uh, nobody knows it better than I. <sighs> well, how you doing, Johnny boy? Okay, we're, we're getting by. Getting by? Look, Johnny, this isn't for you. Huh? What isn't for me? Well, this l miserable little apartment. You and Janie deserve more. Oh, now, wait a minute, Tim. I know it isn't much, but a guy has to start somewhere. Janie's satisfied, and later on... Whoa, whoa, kid, take it easy. I'm not saying you won't do better. I'm only saying that I can help you to do better quicker. Huh? What kind of a job are you working at now, kid? Well, I'm manager of a filling station. But I got plans, Tim. A what? <laughs> Johnny... Now I know you'll never learn. Look, take an hour off tomorrow and meet me up at my dad's office. Yeah, but I can't leave the station. Oh, yes, you can. And leave it for good, I hope. Our organization needs smart men. And uh, why not keep the gravy in the family? <laughs> and then it happened. All the years of preparation, all the penny pinching that enabled me to get through college and the odd chance it had given me Tim as a friend. They began to pay off. It seemed to be the break of a lifetime. And Mr. Stryker was just as great a guy as Tim. I couldn't wait to tell Janie the news. Janie! Janie! Johnny, what is it? What's happened? I got the job, Janie. Tim's father liked me. I'm starting in next Monday. Job? Tim's father? Johnny, what are you talking about? My new job. Tim put it up to me last night. I asked him not to tell you until we were sure. Oh, Janie, we're on the way up. Nothing can stop us now. But, but what about the filling station? Forget it, forget it. Johnny, are you sure? May I never see the inside of a filling station again. You know what my starting salary is with Tim? How much, Johnny? Eight thousand a year. No. It's a dream. I'll wake up. And that's just the beginning. Darling, I told you I'd do it. I told you I'd be able to give you everything. But, Johnny, are you sure it'll last? Last? Of course it'll last. Now, oh, for gosh sake, stop worrying. I'm keeping my promise. I'm building that fence. Yes, darling. You're keeping your promise. Well, honey, there it is. What do you think? Oh, Johnny, it's the cutest house I've ever seen. Oh, I thought you'd like it. Let's get out and look at it. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Johnny... Let's be practical. We can't afford a house like this. Oh, I see. You don't think I'll be able to keep my promise, do oh, you? Oh, Johnny, stop talking about your promise. The least I can do right now is to give you a place where we can entertain. You want to know Tim doesn't like it, because we can't return a few of the invitations we're always accepting. Then it was Tim who suggested we buy this house. Tim isn't that crude, Janie. But he did think it was a good idea. Well, of course he did. Why shouldn't he? My gosh, Janie, Tim gave me my break. Oh, all right, dear. We'll buy the house. I guess we can pay for it some way. Johnny, I know something is wrong. You're pale as a sheet. All right, something's plenty wrong, Janie. I've lost my job. Lost your job? Oh, Johnny. Do, do you mean you were fired? Well, almost as bad. Business has been falling off and, well, they had to start cutting down. Since I was the last to be taken on, I was the first to go. But didn't Tim... Tim did everything he could. He was swell. The old man wouldn't listen to him. I see. Look, honey, I, I know it's tough, but I'll get another job. Did Tim take you in to see his father, Johnny? Of course he didn't. But he spent all morning with the old man himself. He told me so. Oh, he told you so. Now, quit worrying, Janie. You know, Johnny, in a way, I don't think it's such a bad break. Not at all. <laughs> I've had a good deal of experience in the investment business, Mr. Hayward. I used to work for Stryker and Company. Uh-huh. Why aren't you working for them now? Oh, well, you see, they're, they're cutting down. Stryker cutting down? That's a little hard for me to believe. <laughs> Tell you what, son, we'll keep your name on file. If we need anyone in the future, we'll get in touch with you. No opening at present. Sorry, no help wanted. Sorry. Oh, 
Janie. No luck, darling? Nope. Oh, Johnny, I'm so sorry. Ah, oh, forget it. Dinner ready? Yes, but first there's something I want to say. Okay, what is it? Dear, let's sell the house and move back to town. No. But, Johnny, the house is nothing but a burden. If we were in town, you'd be near... We're not going to sell the house, Janie. Do you hear? We're not going to sell it. Janie didn't understand. The house had become a symbol. It represented the only forward step I'd made in fulfilling my promise to her. When I wasn't out job hunting, I kept busy by working around the place. Planted a vegetable garden, built a picket fence, gave the place a dab of paint here and there. And then one night I came home late and found Janie, as usual, waiting up for me. How's my darling? I got a job today, Janie. Oh, Johnny, I knew you would, and you worried Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. It isn't what you think. I, I'm going to work as an attendant at that new filling station two blocks down the street. It doesn't matter what you do. Oh, I'm glad, Johnny. Really, I am. Stop it, Janie. You don't have to put on an act. I'm not putting on an act. Oh, Johnny, don't you see? You got the job yourself. We'll get along fine. Yeah, we might get along fine. If I had a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars? I could buy a part interest in the station for that amount. It's a good location. You know, a man could really make some money if he owned part of that setup. But a thousand dollars, Johnny. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, maybe I can save it up and buy in later. Johnny. Yeah? Making a lot of money is really important to you, isn't it? Nope. Doesn't mean a thing. Alice, forget it. I know where you can get a thousand dollars, dear. Huh? Where? Tim. Tim? Yeah, Tim. Why so glum looking, Janie? Oh, I'm not at all glum. It's just that the house isn't straight and I'm not dressed. Johnny said you were coming out for dinner. Not uh, angry at an old friend for dropping around early? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I came early because I wanted to talk to you. This uh, $1,000 Johnny wants to borrow. I know it seems like a lot, Tim, but it means so much to Johnny. But if you don't think it's a good business proposition, you just say so. <laughs> $1,000? It isn't worth worrying about. Then you will loan it to Johnny. Janie, do you want the 1000 Well, Well, Johnny does. If I... Uh, Refuse to loan. Well, you've every right to refuse. But I think it's a good investment. Janie, it's throwing good money after bad. You know that, don't you? Tim, what are you saying? You know what I'm saying. Because all these years have proved it. I've waited for you to admit your mistake, to realize that Johnny's a weakling. I won't listen to anything like that. Yes, you will, because it's true. Oh, Janie, I've tried to be patient with you. I even gave Johnny that job, a chance to make something out of himself, just to prove to you that he would fail, even when he was given a chance. You did all you could to load Johnny up with debts and then make him fail. Frankly, Janie, yes. I, I can't believe it. Wake up, Janie. This is your chance. I want you to divorce Johnny and marry me. Tim, you... You fool. You poor, stupid fool. Can't you understand that I love Johnny more than anything else in the world? That isn't true. Janie, darling! Tim, please. Let her go, Tim. Oh, Johnny. It's all right now, Janie. What's the matter, Tim? Lost your tongue? Don't act like a little dope, Johnny. I could hear you almost out of the street. Don't stop. You're not afraid of little Johnny, are you? The big hero of the campus hasn't gone soft, has he? <coughs> Why, you... <coughs> you asked for it! <coughs> oh, Johnny! Feel better, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. What happened? You and Tim were fighting. Oh, yeah, yeah. He knocked me out, huh? You were wonderful. And I'm glad because now you'll stop that crazy hero worship of the great Tim Stryker. But he knocked me out. That big bum knocked me out. Well, he's bigger than you are, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, he's bigger than I am. He always has been. I guess I just can't win. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, stop talking like that. Stop it. You've always won. You always will win as far as I'm concerned. Oh, thanks, Janie. You're swell. I promised you the world with a fence around it. The world with a fence. And now I... Now I won't be able to give you anything. Johnny, come with me. Where? Outside. Come on. There's something I want to show you. Look, Janie, not now. I've got to figure out something. You can way. figure it out later. Come on. Out here on the porch. Janie, for crying out Look, loud. Look, over there. Where? There's nothing. There. There's a lot. 
There's everything. The fence, Johnny. The fence that you build around our house. Don't you realize what it is? Yeah, it's just an ordinary picket fence. Oh, it's more, Johnny, a lot more. It's the fence around the world that you promised long ago. Our world. Everything that's important to both of us is inside that fence. Everything that's important to us. So long as we love each other and believe in, in things that are good and decent. That's all I want, Johnny. That's all I ever wanted. You and I and someday our family inside the fence that you built with your own hands. Don't you understand, my darling? Yes. Yes, I guess I do at that. Janie. Janie. I never realized it. But we both had the world with a fence around it, all the time. This is Frank Leahy again. As parents, our greatest happiness is to see our children growing up strong and healthy. We don't begrudge effort or expense for them. We want to see them develop, not only physically, but intellectually, morally, and spiritually. Because men and women without moral strength and a spiritual outlook can find no worthwhile purpose or meaning or accomplishment in life. That's why family prayer is a necessary part of a good home life. Our examples as parents, our sincerity, our reverence and respect for God when we pray with our family is the greatest inspiration we can give our children to live good and useful lives. There is a right spirit in a home where family prayer is a daily practice, a spirit of moral and spiritual growth, a spirit of unity and understanding, because the family that prays together stays together. This is Frank Leahy saying good luck and God bless you. Our thanks to Robert Stack, Richard Webb, and Gloria Blondell for their appearance, and to Richard Hill Wilkinson for writing our play. Music was scored and conducted by Max Tare. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Next week, our Family Theater star will be Dennis Day in Herbert Has Ideas. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at this same time when our family theater star will be Dennis Day. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.